So this week I've got a trick for creating a wood frame and uh, making it look like it's held together with these metal brackets that we're going to create uh, pretty much from scratch. Uh, and it's going to start with this image here. And this is actually an image I created in a tutorial over on the Layers Magazine website where I used Illustrator to cr create this composite. And I'm going to go ahead and use this to create a a frame out of this image here. So I've got this uh, stock image. It's just merely this uh, these different uh, planks of wood here. And we're going to go ahead and build a wood frame out of it. So we will begin by going and grabbing the rectangular marquee tool. And I'm just going to drag down and select one plank of the wood here. And I'm not worried about being super precise with it. I just want to get the, uh, the majority of the wood plank itself selected. And I'm just going to take that element using the move tool and drag and drop it over into my working layout here. And just hold the shift key down as you drag it over and it will drop it in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this in free transform. I'm just going to press Command or Control T. And I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this object and place it up here at the top of the image right there. Now I could go ahead and duplicate this layer and use it for other parts of the frame, but I don't want to use the same piece of wood on each one. It'll look uh, kind of repetitive. So I'm just going to go over here and select the next one over. And then once again, drag and drop it over. And we'll just go ahead and give this a rotation as well and then position this at the bottom of the image just like that. And then we'll just continue doing this. We'll go ahead and select another wood plank here. Drag and drop it over and we'll place this over on the side. And I'm just going to go ahead and just squash this down a little bit just so it'll fit and uh, kind of make the edges kind of uh, all flow together there. So the wood frame's coming together nicely. Let's go ahead and grab one last one. I'm just going to get this last one on the edge here. Go ahead and drag it over and then once again we'll just put it on the edge. Free transform and squash it down a little bit. There we go. So there is my wood frame. Now I want this to have the appearance as though it's being held to, these boards are being held together by these metal brackets that are on that, which would normally be probably on the back side of the frame, but I really want this to look kind of rickety and old, so I really want those to be in the front. Now before I do that, uh, notice each wood plank is on its own layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all these layers containing each of the wood planks and just go ahead and merge them together and make it one layer. Oops. Let's go press Command or Control E, there we go. All right, so now all the wood planks are on their own layer. So while it's like that, I'm gonna go ahead and add a drop shadow layer style here, just so we can have a little bit of a shadow being cast by the wood frame onto the image and gives a little bit more realistic depth uh, there. There we go. All right, so now I'm ready to build the metal brackets. Now, obviously they need to look old because the wood itself looks old and it's kind of a vintage image, so it needs to go along with all that. So I have an, a, an old rust image here that we're going to use to create the graphic. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I don't need a new layer actually, I'm going to go ahead and grab the rectangular marquee tool and just go inside of the rust uh, texture here and just hold the shift key down and draw a square selection on the image there. Now, Using the same rectangular marquee tool, I'm now going to hold down the Option key on Mac, that would be Alt on Windows, and this is going to allow me to subtract from the selection. So starting in that bottom right corner, I'm just going to drag a box up, and what I'm looking for is just kind of an L shape, an upside down L shape here, that will play the part of my metal bracket. So now, with that selection uh, adjusted, I'm going to press Command or Control J, and that's going to copy that selected area to its own layer. There it is right there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the color information away because I just like the texture and not necessarily the color. So I'm going to go under Image Adjustments and choose Desaturate. Now, let's go ahead and take this bracket and bring it over to our working layout. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it over. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale it and position it right over here in the upper right corner maybe even give it a little bit of a turn just so it looks a little bit uneven like it was really just kind of thrown together. And we'll zoom in and see what we got here. So there's the bracket. Now, need to give it a little bit more dimension and we're going to do that again with a layer style. So I'm going to zoom it in here so we can really see what's going on and I'm going to go ahead and double click on the layer 
and it'll open up the layer style panel. And let's go ahead and add a bevel and emboss on here. I'm gonna increase the depth quite a bit. And I'm gonna turn off use global light here, just reposition the uh, t uh, light target so the light's a little bit closer to the center there. There we go. Now, I'm also going to add a texture to this. Under the bevel and emboss, there is a texture section here. And the default texture is the very first one in the menu here. And if you just hover over it, you can see it's clouds, the 128 by 128. And that works actually just fine for this. But I am going to increase the scaling just a little bit, about 150. And notice how it kind of gives me that rough metal edge look to it. So it's like it's really um, being affected by the light and everything here. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, the edges are still straight because we had the selection and we were using that rectangular marquee, so the edges are very straight on this. So I'm going to go under the filter menu and go under distort and choose ripple. And using a very small ripple effect here, let me just zoom up here. Notice how it's distorting the edges just a little bit. I'm going to drop that down a little bit. I don't want it to be too much. Let's do it at around 50%. And the size is set to small. And we'll click OK, and notice those edges get a little bit, a um, little bit rougher. Notice the before and after. It's a slight change, but still looks pretty good. Now, here's a cool trick. Something has got to be holding these metal brackets onto the wood, and those would normally be uh, nails. So here's a cool trick. You notice we got the layer style on that, that shape. I'm going to draw a small circular selection, right about the point where I would expect to draw, drive a nail into the wood. And if we're um, highlighted on that metal bracket layer with the layer style and simply press Command J, it will bring that element to its own layer along with the layer style, giving a little bit of dimension to that nail. Now I'm going to undo that because I want to add one more layer style to this metal bracket, and that's just a very simple drop shadow there. So again, I'm going to select a small circular area on that layer and then press Command J, brings that element onto a new layer with the layer style, giving the illusion of a little nail. So I'm going to make a selection of that shape again, just command click on the layer, and then make sure that you have a selection tool active, and then just drag the selection to another part of the shape. Reselect the original shape, again, press command J, and there it is. Let's do that again and add one more up here in the corner. And again, remember to reselect the original layer Press Command J, and there we have it. Now, if I zoom out, we've got a pretty cool looking metal bracket nailed to the wood frame. Now, over here in the layers, that metal bracket and the nails is comprised of four layers, as you can see here. So I'm going to select all four of those layers and then put them in a group. Simply press Command G or Control G on Windows, and it'll group them. Still keeps them as separate layers, but now they're in a group folder because what I want to do is make a duplicate of that group and then simply bring that bracket to another part of the image. And as a group, I can rotate it, put it in free transform to rotate it around, and then continue to do this all the way around the image. And just placing metal brackets around the frame, and ultimately we get a really cool wooden frame for our vintage looking image that has the uh, appearance of being just kind of thrown together with some metal brackets and some old two by fours, giving us a really cool vintage frame for our photo. So again, you know, it's just simply taking a texture like that rust that has the appearance of kind of worn metal, which, it, which obviously was what it is, and then adding a few layer styles to give it dimension. And there you have realistic framings for almost any kind of image.